Back at the end of September, I went on a month-long adventure to Santorini, Greece, a place I've been dreaming of going to for a very, very long time. There's a little story behind why I went there, and I'd like to share that with you, and try my best to condense the hours upon hours upon hours of footage that I shot. So, here we go. In 1985, at the age of 30, my dad Marty embarked on a journey from his hometown of Isleton, California, to Europe in search of artistic inspiration. Somehow, some way, he landed upon Santorini. From what I've been told, his intention was to stay a few weeks and move on, but those weeks turned to months while his return flight expired. Island life was a whole new world. Warm sun, international people, breathtaking 360 degree views, topless beaches, and dancing till dawn. He fell in love with the place, and who could blame him? Most importantly, he was passionately inspired to paint. The summer months passed, December came rolling through, and along with it, murmurs of the international soapbox race held in Ia. A neighbor of his challenged him to compete, and after some initial hesitation, his competitive nature got the better of him, and he decided to accept the challenge. His skills as a master craftsman were put to work. With a limited budget, scraps and bicycle parts collected around the island, and the finishing touch of paper mache, he built an incredible little machine and zipped down that road with the rest of them. The lightest car, the fastest speed, and broken brakes won him the race. The American artist was the champion. He had one hell of a story to tell and a collection of new paintings upon his arrival back home. Unfortunately, a house fire destroyed almost the entirety of his work and photo negatives from that time of his life. So he returned to the island in 93 to paint a new series and brought with him a camcorder to document this trip. The reason I'm sharing this with you instead of, well, my dad, is because he died at the end of September of 2006. The story of his journey to Santorini and the legend of his soapbox victory was immortalized in a screenplay that I found buried in an old file cabinet some years after he passed away. It lit a spark within me to travel there someday and see this magical place for myself. And maybe, just maybe, get a little closer to turning the soapbox screenplay into a movie. I thought to myself, I could keep waiting for the right time or just do it. And so 35 years after the first trip and one impulsive decision, off I went. Last plane to Santorini, baby. The first few days were surreal, filled with non-stop pinch me moments. I couldn't quite believe that I actually made it. This view. The first week was cultural immersion. I wanted to blend in more than anything, and my goal was to live more like a local and be less of a tourist, which didn't take me too long. I walked everywhere I could, eventually renting an ATV, and got the lay of the land. <laughs> I made friends with the cat back at my Airbnb, found a basketball court nearby, and settled into a little routine. My dad's death anniversary came five days after my arrival, marking the 15th year. I got to spend the day before, the day of, and the day after listening to some old audio tapes of his while exploring the places he lived, Venikia and Ia. On those walks around the villages, I stumbled across a few of the subjects of his paintings, specifically Belzevia and Phoenicia Village. To see those in person was pretty crazy. Starting point for the race was right where the mopeds going by. We came down through all the crowds of people. This was all thick with people surrounding the beginning of the race, and then that's where it started going down right there. And you can see it weave all the way to the end. I walked up and down the road of the soapbox race a few times on this trip. The first time on his death day, I went from start to finish and back up, taking in the curves and bends and incline and all the little details. I even got to race up and down it myself in the last few days. I suppose it's pretty obvious, but it was pretty surprising to me. 
it's an almost entirely different place than it was 35 years ago. I mean, I only know what I know from old photos and hearsay, but it felt pretty substantial. It's fully paved and packed with a non-stop flow of massive buses, cars, and littered with ATVs. The road is lined up and down with new hotels, cafes, parking lots, you name it. It's busy. I can only imagine what it was like back then. I wish I could have seen the race live. A week before my flight, I did a little detective work and found one of my father's closest friends who we met back in 85. It was arranged for us to meet at some point during my stay, but I didn't know when. On the eighth day of my trip, I was surprised with a phone call. I met the man of mystery 27 years after the last time they saw one another. Wow. Hello, hello, hello. I give you a hug. Hello, hello, hello. Dad. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, man. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Feels like a What's dream. Your dad's? Our embrace felt like I had met a long lost brother. I got to share the old photos and my dad's camcorder videos from way back when, and it created a beautiful moment that I'm extremely grateful to have been a part of. My dad had no idea just how important those videos would be all these years later, and not just to me. Athens called my name halfway through October. Felt I needed to try the ferries out and have a mini escape from the island to get a fresh perspective. And Athens was dope. I would love to go back there, soon. Also, the ferries were pretty cool too. I only got a little seasick. Watching the sunrise on a ship? Bitch. On the third week, I caught the common cold, and that put me out of business for a few days. Luckily, the weather outside was cold and stormy to match. There was some of the craziest sounding thunder I've ever experienced. Homesickness from the lack of my normal cold remedies and boredom from being stuck in the Airbnb began to creep in, but at least I had my little friend. Smush. Leaving that little dude was, without a doubt, the hardest part of the trip, and honestly, was the only thing that made me emotional. Just picturing him waiting for me by the door after I was gone, oof. The rest of the trip was just gravy. I explored every square inch of the island and made myself try things I wouldn't normally do, like swim in the ocean. It wasn't really my thing before, but now I'm kind of addicted. I especially made the most out of my last eight days. I rented a little cabrio smart car, got up before sunrise every day, and took in all my favorite views one last time. Sunrise time. <laughs> Not too bad, right? The sun hasn't come up yet, but there's nobody else out here, which is why I like this. And it's all like volcanic rock. Cool texture is kind of slippery though, so I might die. Sunrise is my favorite time of day anywhere in the world, but it was especially amazing there. It's quiet and peaceful with no traffic, and there's no hordes of annoying and spatially unaware tourists swinging around their selfie sticks. You get to see all the locals and animals wake up and have the best viewing spot all to yourself. The Greek people are kind, welcoming, and good-hearted. I'm going to miss my friends that I made there. The food is amazing. I tried everything that I could. Coffee is also unique and delicious there, much different than what I'm accustomed to at home. My go-to drink was a Freddo espresso. And aside from the absolutely breathtaking views, the cats of Greece, I think, are one of the best parts. I tried my best to go on this journey without too many expectations. Any that I might have had regarding the island's beauty were blown away. though. 
Subconsciously, I think I went in with a hope of some form of catharsis related to my dad, and to be honest, I don't really know if I found what I was looking for. But that's okay. It's probably just the product of time. It's funny. I was looking to emulate my father's solo adventure and thought that I too would cancel my return flight and stay for a while, but I found that for me, a month was perfect. It was an incredible learning experience and I got what I needed out of it. It was a band-aid that needed to be torn off. There's a lot more of the world to see and that had to be done first. I highly recommend visiting the Greek islands. No matter how amazing it may look through photos and videos, nothing compares to seeing it in person. I'm super excited for the next visit and very much looking forward to being my mom and sister's tour guide. Should have been my dad's job, but I'll happily take the lead.